Alrighty then, folks, this is Alan recording another comprehensive Magic the Gathering Arena draft video. Um, with 5k gold, um, I know Zendikar Rising just came out, but uh, don't mind just sinking 5k gold and trying to generate some gems for our future premiere drafts. And um, yeah, it's been a while since I drafted Ikoria. We all know how um, red white cycling is completely busted and um, how the bots kind of ne neglect it. Um, so maybe we can utilize this to our advantage, generate some wins. Win some gems. Um, it's not necessarily the most um, benevolent thing to do, but I mean, I gotta send, I gotta sink these 5k gems um, somewhere, and Tinker's Cube is gone. So let's go back to Ikoria, try to recall this set, and uh, see how it goes. So this will be a bot draft. We have infinite time to choose our picks, but I'll definitely um, go over everything. Okay, pack one, pick one. Giganta, the Wellspring. Um, I remember the c companion nerf. Now it costs three generic to um, cast, as you can see from um, the uh, the side text, um, the companion side text. So um, the fact that companions got nerfed definitely um, makes um, my picks less, um, picking companions a little bit less. Um, um, due to the fact that um, the 3 generic is a pretty high cost. I mean, Giganta is quite flexible. If it wasn't for the companion nerf, I think it would be the first pick, but um, it's, I'm not going to pay 8 mana for 5-5, five, five, I don't think. Um, and uh, Overall, it just does help you ramp with the tapped ability, but most of the time the Giganta is just going to be a pretty good ground blocker and attacker. But, um, again, due to the nerf, um, I would... I wouldn't really pick Giganta, pack one, pick one. Um, still very flexible, but um, yeah, don't see it happening. Uh, looking at the uncommons, there's a Valiant Rescuer, excellent first pick, and we know how red-white cycling is the strongest archetype. So if I, if I can pick this up early, this can be a powerful, efficient threat. That can kind of set us up for a powerful red-white cycling deck. Alternatively, the more flexible option here would be the Flame Spill. Um, definitely better than the best common in this pack, being the Dranum Stinger. Um, but I think Valiant Rescuer is a lot more powerful than Flame Spill. It's a must-answer threat. It's a threat that can easily win you the game if it goes unchecked. And um, I've stated multiple times, but Red-White Cycling is broken. And um, there's a lot of support at it, at common and uncommon. Um, that I don't mind just first picking the Valiant Rescuer. If this wasn't as packed, though, I'd probably just take Flame Spill over Giganta. Again, the Companion nerfs really hit the Companion's uh, cards quite heavily. So it's not going to be as amazing as it is before when it didn't get the three generic um, cost to cast. But yeah, it's still pretty solid. Probably my third pick if Valiant Rescuer was in this pack. Or I could take a Dranif Stinger and force cycling because this is also another great common. But we'll first pick a Valiant Rescuer, see how it goes. Maybe just force the red-white cycling deck. Um, I think the flex the flame spill could have led, lead to more options, but the Valiant Rescue is just at enough higher power level, and the archetype is at enough higher power level that I have to take it. Um, this pack is not amazing, and um, there's a General's Enforcer. Hmm. Like, I don't really like Valiant Rescue in the Black-White Humans deck, but it can be fine. Like, we could be in a Black-White deck with a little bit of Cycling Synergy. Alternatively, there's really nothing that fits well in the Red-White Cycling deck um, with the Valiant Rescue. Um, the best cards in this pack, General's Enforcer for the Black-White Humans deck. And um, Humble Naturalist, fine creature um, that can help ramp out some big stuff and splash and fix. Power Ceratops, also pretty solid in the Red Blue Spells deck, but I think we just take the General's Enforcer here. Um, and usually in Ikoria, there's some macro themes. It's not really about color preference, um, so to speak. So, like Some black cards don't really play well in other black decks um, or um, any other color, vice versa. Um, one thing you got to keep in mind, the macro ar archetypes in this set are Mutate, um, Cycling, Companion used to be a macro archetype, but it's gotten nerfed, so I really wouldn't count that. Um, mutate, um, Cycling, the Jeskai Cycling Colors, um, the Soltire team, Teamer Mutate Colors, and the Mardu Sacrifice Colors, and then, of course, there's Blue-Red Spells, which is its own archetype in its own right, but um, yeah, that's really the theme you want to kind of um, think about when you're drafting Ikoria. Like, Valiant Rescuer goes better in a cycling deck than a human's deck, but it can still be fine in a human's deck, um, although not as good in a cycling archetype. So, General's Forcer Rider being like the black white um, sacrifice deck with the humans and the 1 1 tokens, while Valiant Rescuer wants to be in cycling. So, they both, even though they're both kind of share the same color, it, they're not necessarily good cards that fit along, fit well together, but I think it's enough better here that we just take it. 
so we'll see how it goes. So we can be cycling or black white humans, okay? Some pretty good cards for the cycling deck. There's a root, rooting Moloch. I'm definitely going to pick this one up here. The fact that it can just bring back a cycling card from your graveyard to recast is quite strong. Um, it's just a powerful 2 for 1. 5 mana 4 4 is a solid body. And then you can bring back the Valiant Rescuer if it get, ends up getting answered or the Dranith Stinger. Also another great common. Um, there's a Majestic Oracorn that plays well in the Mutate deck. But White Mutate is, I think, the worst color to mutate things onto since white really wants to do the whole human cycling thing humans rather being humans and cycling rather than mutate i don't not big fan of majestic oracorn unless you can splash it and play in like some sort of mid-range um bant deck with mutate um but yeah ruining moloch seems like the clear pick i think it's enough better than draft stinger that we take it and i'd rather be in cycling and there's nothing good in black here so best commons dream tail heron dragon stinger but we'll take the rooting moloch Okay, um, so what else do we have here? Um, Blitz of the Thunder Raptor is good in blue-red spells, best in blue-red spells, um, but it can still be fine in cycling. I just don't think it's going to be super amazing, though, so I could just take a memory leak here. Like, it's just a one-mana cycler. Alternatively, there's really nothing else. There's dead weight, which is okay if I want to stick with the black-white humans plan. Throwable coil bug, find mutate target, creature that you can always get back and sack. So quite a versatile card, but... I think we just take the memory leak here, start with our one mana cyclers. Um, Blitz to the Thunder Raptor, again, best in blue red spells. I mean, I guess we could still be like blue red cycling, but um, I think just having the one mana cycler here is good enough since we have the Valiant Rescuer. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can prioritize some other better cards in the following packs. Okay, Stair Tactician, arguably one of the best commons in this set. Um, probably the best. Um, Cycling common, although it's close between Prickly and Marmoset, but the Snare Tactician just offers a lot. It's kind of like a nice um, removal spell, as long as you have enough cycling. Tapping down the creatures, using this either offensively or defensively is quite nice. Alternatively, there's Fight as one, which I wouldn't mind playing in the cycling deck, since there's a decent number of humans and non-humans, but it's not a high priority. But um, solid, efficient spell since it can also give your creatures indestructible, but the Snare Tactician has to be the pick here. Another good common is Spell Eater Wolverine, best in blue-red spells, just like the Blitz of the Thunder after in the last pack, but still feasible in um, red-white cycling. If you can sink enough instances and sorceries in the graveyard, this can be a fine um, three-drop, but with the Snare Tactician, just kind of force the cycling deck. Um, I'm not a big fan of Sanctuary Smasher. I think it's a little bit too expensive to cycle. I prefer the Lava Serpents, um, to be honest. Could just take the, the Imposing Vantasaur here, and even cycle it for one. A 6 mana, 3-6 is not all that impressive, but still fine. There's a late Blitz of the Thunder Raptor, so good sign that maybe Blue-Red Spells is open. Since we did pass a Spell Eater Wolverine, and we also did pass a, um, um, Spell the Pyroceratops, um, Blue-Red Spells could just be very open as well, but I think I prefer the, um, Lava Serpent over Sanctuary Smasher. I just have not been in, impressed with this. 3 mana to cycle is a lot. You don't really want to keep up 3 mana to cycle. You'd rather just have a bunch of 1 mana cyclers in a red-white cycling deck. So, we rather, I'd just rather just take the Imposing Vantasaur, I think. And, um, yeah, I could just take a Spell Eater Wolverine. There's a random 2 mana cycler, like Wilt. But, um, I mean, I could just take Savai Sabertooth. Um, we only have 1 instant sorcery to cycle right away. The Savai is still a 2 drop. Like, a 2 mana 3-1 can still hit pretty hard if it goes unanswered and unchecked. It's not a card I'm happy to play, but I'll play it if we don't have any good 2-drops. I mean, alternatively, there's a Spell Eater Wolverine, but we can pick up better 3s. Wilt, fine 2-mana Cycler, but I prefer to 1-mana Cyclers. So, another sign that Blue-Red Spells is open, but we'll take the Savice Saver 2 here. Sick of our Red-White Cycling plan. Um, okay, there is a Coordinated Charge, which I don't hate. It's in our colors. A uh, decent 2-mana Cycler. Alternatively, there's some late blue cards, Baby Godzilla for the Mutate decks, even Essence Scatter for the blue-red spells deck. With a, one Savite Saber 2, I don't think I need to prioritize a second one. So it's either between Coordinated Charge or Cathartic Reunion. I usually don't mind having one copy of Cathartic Reunion, but um, Coordinated Charge is still pretty castable. Like, we might need the extra damage to get in. And uh, I don't usually like 2-mana Cyclers, but if it's a 2-mana Cycler that can be played, I'll happily take it. Um... And, you know, one mass cyclers are good, but um, sometimes you don't mind having a mix with them, and maybe we can pick up a Cathartic Reunion later. Like, I don't really want to play two copies of Cathartic Reunion, so I can prioritize them a lot less. 
like one copy usually makes it, but yeah, so it's less of an incentive, incentive to pick it here. And we can just take a coordinate charge as a good two mana cycler. And it's still pretty solid. And I can just take a Dranith Healer. There's also Will of the All Hunter, but again, I just prefer the one mana cyclers. Like, I wouldn't mind also main decking this since it can have some useful utility in it, but yeah, one mana cyclers beat two mana cyclers. And this is also, it can be an okay two drop to cast in the deck, but I'd rather not cast it, but cycle it away. Okay, um, I don't think I want any of these. Just take a random two mana cycler. Don't think there's any chance that we end up in the black white humans deck for the bushmeat poacher otherwise it's still it's a good card um i guess there's a higher chance we end up splashing black um and maybe end up in barter cycling since green is trying to mutate so i could just take the suffocating fumes overall i'm not going to play a pyroceratops in this deck um yeah not a playable card take another survive saber tooth in case we don't have enough twos i don't mind a copy but usually two is not great same thing with a Frenzied Raptor, if we don't have enough threes, I'll play one, but very unexciting filler card. Um, yeah, I'll take Uncommon for gems here, I don't think I'm ever playing two Frenzied Raptors. And we wield one anyways, so didn't matter. Okay, yeah, we have a pretty solid setup for a red-white cycling deck, blue-red spells also seemed open, but um, there just wasn't too any, any amazing payoffs. We, um, I mean, there was a couple of payoffs, but I think of our early choices around Valiant Rescuer and Snare Tactician and Rooted Moloch, we just want to stay the best archetype. So, red-white cycling it is. And we got the Reptilian Reflection, pretty powerful payoff. I think I like it over the second Snare Tactician. The fact that this, this is uncommon wants to maybe prioritize it a lot more, since um, cards that common you can usually pick up later. Um, uncommons, not really, and this hits pretty hard if you can cycle, and it's just a powerful win condition. Um, like, a 5-4 on turn 3 is really difficult to deal with. The fact that this comes with, in with pace and trample is quite strong. I think pack 1, I would still take Retellion Reflection over Kahira. Since, even though Kahira is a nice Anthem effect, um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit... I mean, it fits best in, like, the Mutate decks, where you can prioritize the Beast and Dinos. Um, it's a fine card, but I still don't think it's very impressive. Um, let's just take the Reptilian Reflection. Just a nice cycling payoff card. Same with the Snare Tactician. Um, even though this is a red-white gold card, it's not a card you want to play in this set. Um, it's just very... Um, um, it's, it goes in a Mutate archetype, which is pretty bad in red-white if you're trying to go that strategy. So I don't like it. There's Checkpoint Officer, which is okay um, for the Humans deck if you want to tap things down. A bunch of two mana cyclers I don't care about. Could now just take the Spell Eater Wolverine. We do have Suffocating Fumes, Coordinated Charge, and Memory Leak. We don't mind cycling away. And those are both instances and sorceries. Overall, I don't really want a two mana cycling rock here. I think the Spell Eater Wolverine is fine. And um, yeah, it can be a fine three drop. Better, Definitely better than the Frenzied Rafter, which I'm hoping not to play. There's a Gopher Blood. Good one mana cycler. But I think I have to take the Prickly Marmoset. Another excellent payoff at common. The reason why Red White Cycling is good is not only because of Xena Flare, which is the Mythic Uncommon, but Prickly Marmosets and Snare Tacticians at Common are also quite great. Other great cards include Back for More. Charge is a little bit overrated according to the pros. Capture Sphere is fine, but Prickly Marmoset will probably make definitely make the cut here. Um, okay. Uh, this is a random 2 mass Cycler. Um, yeah, this pack sucks. Ooh, starting developments of one mass cycle. I guess we'll t just take that. Another instance in sorcery. I mean, instant to go into the graveyard for the Spell Eater Wolverine. Seems good here. Um, okay, I think I'm going to take the Prickly Mama set here. Just a million of these are pretty pretty broken. Like, a 3-man 2-3 is already a good blocker and attacker. Um, I mean, two man, a 3-man 2-3 first strike, that is. The fact that you can pump this, and if it goes unblocked, you can just deal a ton of damage is quite insane. So yeah, Prickly Marmoset is definitely going to be the pick here. There's a Gopher Blood I don't mind playing, another back for more. So Gogari seems open in this direction. But um, we'll just take a Prickly Marmoset. Maybe we don't have to play the Spell Eater Wolverine after all. Stormwall Cabrador, not amazing. Any Cyclers? Not really, this pack is just kind of dead. I don't think I'm playing any of these cards, to be honest. Could just take a random like Rugged Highlands if, in case we end up splashing like um, the... The mythic, the broken uh, trampling creature that if it deals trample damage, you just generate more trample creatures. So we'll speculate on it. Highly doubt we're going to play it. 
unless we see it. Just take a go for blood. There's a late blood curdle. So black is very open from our left hand direction. But we'll stick to our game plan. Just take another good one man cycler. And you can also fight with this spell. It's pretty good to rooting Moloch. Since this is a pretty nice body to fight with. Um, not, not a great fight spell since red creatures tend to be small. But sometimes you do. It can be useful. So definitely a high priority um, one man cycler. Um, no cycling creatures here. I guess the highest chance we're going to be playing something would be a Day Squad Marshal at 4. Like, we have a gap at 4. I don't mind playing it. Alternatively, there's a late weaponized monster for the Red Sacrifice decks. Red Black Sacrifice... I mean, Red Black, but even the Mar 2 Gullers, you can splash this, and this is a pretty underrated card. Take a Day Squad Marshal as Curve Filler in case we need some 4s. Um... I guess I'll just take a random 2 mass Cycler. I don't think we're going to be dra drafting, drafting Jeskai anytime soon, so I don't think we need to dual land. The uh, Zagoff Crystal is a fine 2 mass Cycler that we could use more of. Um, and I'll take the Inthotha Crystal. Um, I mean, there's a chance we could maybe end up splashing for, I don't know, say an Ultimatum, but I think we can win without the Ultimatums. Ultimatums aren't a high pick in this format, usually speaking, since they're really hard to cast. So I guess I'd rather just have a random 2 mass cycler in case we don't have any more cycling. Even the late checkpoint officer we can even main deck. If you like it, prefer it over the second Savai Sabertooth. None of these matter. Ho hopefully we don't play Forbidden Friendship, but this card is actually really good in this set. Like, it's good for the Sacrifice archetype, it's good for the blue-red spells. And uh, what else is this good for? Mutate, since it generates a dinosaur creature. So this is actually a really good common, but we're not going to play it. Okay, so second pack went well right. I think the third pack, we should be able to solidify our cycling deck. Um, we have some nice commons, some powerful payoffs um, at common, and the, there's a Valiant Rescuer, Reptilian Reflection, which is a great payoff. So this deck is coming out pretty nicely, and if we're lucky enough to get a Zenith Flare, um, we can maybe hope to 7-0 this draft. Not 7-0, but at least get to 7 wins. Could actually play the stuff with King Fumes, never mind, it's just, um, Two mass cycler here. I think I just I'm just gonna take a fire prophecy. This is also very excellent first pickable card. Um, between this and blood curdle, it is close, but I would probably take fire prophecy over blood curdle since, again, the best archetype is red white cycling and blue red spells in this set. And uh, yeah, this is just really good. It might not have the cycling, um, count as cycling, but it's still instant speed. It still kills like there's a lot of three toughness creatures in this set, and it still helps you like loot away. Later, so this is a really good card. I uh, wouldn't mind a Lava Serpent. Best card in the pack is like by far the um, Gyruda. Even if you don't pay, play this as a companion, it's just a powerful six drop. Six mana, six six is a nice ground attacker and blocker. And then like this being able to um, get back, get a large creature from the opponent's graveyard or an even cost is quite nice. Quite flexible too. Plays well in any blue deck, any black deck. Um, yeah, Gigan is really good. And if you can back for more or like Unbreakable Bond with this, it's even better. But uh, yeah, easy fire prophecy. Um, take our first removal spell, I think. Um, what's in this pack? Another go for blood. Can be um, solid one mana cycler and also an okay removal spell. Again, not super amazing, but there's some circumstances where we don't mind having it. Alright, there we see our Sanctuary Smasher, but I think it's the Pacifism. I talked about how much I hate this card, it's not good. Definitely gonna take the Pacifism over Memory Leak, just a solid removal spell. Um, definitely need removal to get past, past blockers in this set. Um, so it's gonna be the clear pick, although it doesn't cycle again. We just went, want to share our removal spells to uh, survive. And here, I think I'm just gonna take the Lava Serpent, can be a nice top end finisher. Also, a two mass cycler, that's not irrelevant um, since. We can also cast it, and it's in our colors, so... I do like a Lava Serpent at the top end, and there's our Mythic Uncommon. The reason why this set kind of sucks is not because of the wide variety and the amazing archetypes you can draft, and um, it's just because Boros Cycling just dominates this format, and this is the reason why. This is one of the cards that Boros Cycling did not need. Like, Red-White Cycling is already a strong archetype, but the fact that you need to give them like a card that you cannot interact with and just kills you ASAP is quite broken. Yeah, so this card's a mistake, but we'll take it here because we're we're kind of the bad guys. Um, gotta keep in mind we don't have we need to ensure that we have enough cycling in this deck. Definitely not gonna cycle the Valiant Rescue, but it also counts as a cycler. Um, yeah, this also counts as a two mana cycler. I think we'll get there. Let's take our Mythic Uncommon. Hope to win the draft with this. 
Um, there's a Fire Prophecy, but I think it's a of Stinger. Not only can you cycle this, but it's also another powerful payoff card. I clicked it a little bit too fast, but I think it's the correct pick. And here we're, we're going to take our Dranath Healer, a, one, a two drop or one mana cycler that we can cast. I'd rather be aggressive with the Dranath Stinger by picking an opponent because Red White is a very aggressive archetype with the cycling. Um, but yeah, in that pack with the Dranath Stinger, I think I saw a Fire Prophecy as well. Um, but the correct choice has to be the Dranath Stinger. Here we're just going to take Dranath Healer, another good 1 mana Cycler, and we'll just take a million Dranath Stingers, ping the opponent to death. So there's no reason to cast these anymore for 2. We can toss away this Survive Sabertooth. We can even toss away this Checkpoint Officer, even though it could be removal, like we don't really need to focus on too much of that. We're just going to cycle and kill the opponent, essentially. Um, yeah, we'll just take a random 2 mana Cycler. Um, I guess I'd rather have the Easy Prey since it... It's an instance of sorcery for maybe the Spell Eater Wolverine. But this card might still not be played. Um, just take another random 2 mass Cycler. Don't think I'm playing any of these. Um, I think we'll take our Cathartic Reunion now. I'd rather have one over the, Cath the Ketria Crystal, but we might not play it. But it's pretty good of Xenoflare. Like, I don't really like this card unless you have Xenoflare, since now we can easily just discard some of our um, instances and sorceries and then fuel up our Xenoflare to kill the opponent. So, seems fine. Okay, and this seems like a, a really powerful deck. Um, so, cuts. I think we can get away without the Day Squad Marshal. We don't really have synergy. Like, it's a filler 4 drop at the very least. Um, but it doesn't have any synergy in this deck. And we can just run away with a bunch of 2 drops and 3 drops. I don't think we need it. Um, can we get away with how many lands? Um, 11 lands? No, usually the it's either 14 or 13. 12 is a little bit ambitious, I think. So we can run away with maybe 13 lands. But again, I think the rule of thumb is for every 3 1 mana cyclers, you cut a land. So this is 1 land, so this would be 16. Um... Um, 17, I mean 15 with the Gopher Blood cuts. Um, these are 2 mana cyclers. This is a random 2 mana cycler. How good Spell Eater Wolverine is? It's actually not that bad. Um, like we do have a lot of instances of sorceries to cycle away. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, I mean, Fire Prophecy is an instance of sorcery. Xenoflare is an instance of sorcery. Um, Cathartic Reunion is also an instance of sorcery. So, Spell Eater Wolverine is not that bad. I don't hate playing this card. Um, it seems quite good. Um, so, one more cut. I mean, I don't really want to cut anything here. I could just cut it anyways, since we have a bunch at three already. Um, alternatively, I could just cut a random two mana cycler. Um, so I guess this is also one mana cycler, so um, let's see. If we count, this is 16 lands, um, then this is 15 lands, and then 14 lands, 14 lands, um, okay, let me, let me count, I get 16, um, 15, 14, yeah, I guess 13 lands is fine, and then maybe, like, what do we cut? Maybe we just do cut the Spell Eater Wolverine, like... I don't think we're going to have any trouble closing out the game, like, it's solid if you can just cycle a bunch of stuff in the graveyard. Let's just count our cycling, one, maybe two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 18 cyclers, um, how many creatures, 12 creatures, you might even play Dranif's Healer on too, so it's not guaranteed. Yeah, maybe I just ditched the Wolverine, um, and I just want to have as much cycling spells in the yard for the Zenith Flare, and then we just want to have as much of cycling, even the 2-mana cyclers for the Prickly Marmoset, Snare Tactician, and Dranif Stinger. I think, I think this is good. I mean, I could just ditch the Cathartic Reunion too. But it can't help it can't help us smooth out our curve. I mean, or like it can be very useful in the late game discarding two lands. Like you can't even flood with some um, thirteen lands as weird as it seems. Or you don't even hit your land drops, you might need to cast this on two. You can put two cyclers in the graveyard and draw a bunch of stuff. 
So I don't actually hate the copy of Cathartic Reunion. And yeah, I, this is a good card, but I don't think we're going to have any problems closing out. Like we have Draft Stingers to ping them. Valiant Rescue can just make them one, a bunch of 1-1s. One, one. Prickly Marmosets can hit pretty hard. Riftoning Reflection, Xenoflare, Lava Serpents, Rooting Moloch. Yeah, this this is good. Let's, um... Um... Okay, um, what should we name this? Cheap Trick. Yeah, seems fine, Cheap Trick. And then we'll put Xenoflare as our picture, obviously, because it's a broken card. And slightly favoring red, so 7 red, 6 white seems good. So, yeah, let's see how this goes. And uh, this is the reason why Ikoria became a really bad limited format. Okay, well, there's our broken 2 drop, our broken 3 drop. We're keeping this. Um... Okay, he starts off with Mysterious Egg, so he's going to be a Mutate deck. Um, hopefully I can get everything out before he um, starts mutating. Um, it's not going to be until turn 3 when he has the, um, what's your bunk call it, the Migratory Greathorn. There could be an Essence Scatter, but I'm not going to play around it this early. The earlier I get this out, the better. And this kind of this will just force him to use it anyways. That's fine. He could use the Migratory Greathorn here. To mutate, that's, that'll be kind of bad for us. It's, it's going to be a four-powered creature. Thieving Otter. I don't think I care about him drawing cards. I think I'm just going to set my Riptilene Reflection and start getting in for damage next turn. We can cycle a two-mana cycler. Um, I mean, I guess it'll depend on what he has here. This drawing cards is pretty good for him, but I think we can kill him fast enough, maybe. That's not going to matter. Alternatively, I could just keep up the Reptilian Reflection to block... Maybe I'll just do that. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm racing him if he's going to draw all these cards, so I think we just pass here. We can cycle a coordinated charge and block the 2-2 two -two before... I mean, he could use a bubble snare, I mean, capture sphere here, but I think I still go for it. He might respond to this, but what can you do? There's capture sphere at instant speed, I think. Um... Probably has a capture sphere here, and if he does, he's just going to draw a million cards, and we might just lose this, but that's fine. I mean, I can't win them all, so we're just going to block here. And if he uses uses a pump trick to two for one himself, that's also okay with me. I just don't want him drawing cards forever. In this format, he might be the aggressor here. I mean, if he wants to two for one himself and kill the Reptilian Reflection here at two, that's okay. That's totally fine with me. I mean, he's. He, I mean, he did draw a card and net a card from this, so I guess it's still fine for him. What is he thinking here? Next turn, I just drop the Draft Stinger and cycle and deal some damage in the turn. I don't necessarily need to. Um, I think he's thinking where where now he wants to kill this. Okay, that's fine. Um, is there anything I can respond to? X equals 2. I can't pump it. Um, but I'm definitely going to cycle this anyways. But for now, we're just going to let this resolve. And we'll cycle away to coordinate charge just to put our cycling in the deck be mana efficient. Ooh, there's our snare tap Titian. Okay, I don't hate the snare tap Titian. Even if he kills it, I can still tap down the Thieving Otter. So that's actually not bad for me. I'm going to play the snare tap Titian here and then we can cycle away to Imposing Vantasaur. Um... Or block the Thieving Otter. Pre-combat. I mean, it depends. If he if he mutates on the Mysterious Egg, I'm going to tap it down. Um, This is only on his upkeep. I could tap this down and attack for two. I think I'll do that. The more cyclers we get in our deck, the more Xena Flare will just get better. Um, Here, we can play a land. Um... Is there a reason to keep up a Cycler? I could just play the Rooting Moloch, actually. If he deals with the Rooting Moloch, that's fine. The Rooting Moloch can get back, I guess, Valiant Rescuer. Alternatively, I can Draft Stinger and Marmoset. I think I'll just um, Rooting Moloch now, since he's tapped out. It's just a good block over the 2-2 as well. Um, yeah, we'll get back to Valiant Rescuer. And then we can start tapping his stuff down eventually. We'll tap for 2 here. 
Um, this is going to gain a counter. Um, not what I want, but I think we can maybe outvalue him. Maybe we'll see. Next turn, Valley Rescuer and Marmoset can be decent. We can even attack. I don't care if this connects and draws. Like, it's pretty annoying. Like, because if we have the Snare Tactician to tap his stuff back on on his turn, then then we can prevent him from getting in with his 3-3. Three, three. Then we can just start racing him. Okay, Rumbly Rock Slide. He draws a card here. Sure. I can also cycle on his upkeep, so then he... Um, he grows his Thieving Otter instead of um, drawing a card off of it. Um, so what now I can do... I guess I don't mind the Valiant Rescuer here. Um, I can even just play the Draft Stinger and cycle a Zag of Triumph. Yeah, let's just do that. Um, and then we can tap down the Thieving Otter on his, on his turn. So we don't... I don't care. I don't hate that. And I have to keep in mind, it's only for the first card I cycle. I make a 1-1 one, one per turn, so I don't really want to... Um, yeah, he draws two cards off of it. That's really good for him. And then we can just cycle this, and then we can just tap his stuff down. He might just kill this. Subduel, yeah, we'll just cycle now. Make our 1-1. One, one. And we can just keep cycling here. Um, so I don't know if I need to lob a Serpent next turn. He could be keeping up like some sort of counters magic. Might just want to cycle the Lava Serpent. Um, yeah. I could play the Draft Stinger and ping him to death. I'm not sure. Yeah, let's just play the second Dram Stinger, and then we can um, cycle away the Lava Serpent on his pre-combat step. Or even just Chomp. Like, the Chomping isn't bad, actually. Like, I could block the Thieving Otter and just, like, cycle something away. He's gonna draw a bunch of cards, but we should be okay still. The opponent's at 10 life. He needs, like, a board wipe to deal with this, otherwise we're just gonna deal too much damage, I think. He's drawing cards, but there's just no threats. Okay, more otters. Sure, I don't really care about the otters. Don't think I'm casting Lava Serpent. I think it's too slow. I think we just... I think we just cycle here. That's fine. He taps it down. We're just going to use this pre-combat so he doesn't draw cards. And we just ping him a mil million times. Yeah, Dram Stinger's so good. Oh, now we have our Gopher Blood to fight off an Otter. That's great. Hey, two Gopher Bloods. So what can I do here? Um, so if I cycle twice, he'll be down to four. Um, alternatively, I could just fight here. Fight one of them. Actually, I think I just want to cycle. Let's just do that. This could be lethal. Like, if we just get a bunch of cyclers together, ping him a bunch of times, and just tap down all his stuff. We can get him for lethal, I think. Okay, so we'll just cycle away this memory leak. And then once we get him for two damage, it's just GG. Yeah, this is the power of red-white cycling. It did not need Xena Flare. Now as you can see how stupid this card is. Now we can just cycle our go for blood, tap the egg down. Yeah, this card is this deck is really stupid. As you can see, you know, red-white cycling is completely broken. Um very fun and balanced archetype indeed. Even Even with the opponent drawing a million cards, um, oh right, they're folks. This is sorry, not this is a um, comprehensive, stupid YouTube video. Okay, um, yeah, sorry, I had that up. 
Um, but yeah, as you can see, you know, it's, it's, um, now you can tell why this format was ruined. And I've said multiple times already. But now you see the power. The opponent was outvaluing us. He was drawing like a million cards, like off of those primal empathies. He even connected twice with the otter, I think. Or once. I think, yeah, he connected twice, I think, because I tapped one down the falling turn after. And uh, yeah, we still managed to win that game. I don't know how that was even possible. Alright, this, I don't mind keeping one lander in a cycling deck, is actually not not a bad idea. It's not actually that bad, like we can just cycle away to Gopher Blood, Xena Flare them, yeah, let's try it. And if it doesn't happen, we can, if we get our red land, we can actually just play the Cathartic Reunion. Well, he has his own Broken Mythic Uncommon, okay. We'll play land and pass. I don't mind just cycling this. I guess he's playing black-white humans, okay. I think I'd rather have this in red-white, but we'll see. Okay, so I could cycle this. Um, I think I will. Just to dig towards more lands. Um, I could just pacify this. Alternatively, I can just try to hit my land drops by Cathartic Reunion. And I think I'll do that instead. And we're fine ditching the two-man cyclers because we have Zenith Flare in the yard. This is essentially almost cy like cycling them, so... I just want to make sure I hit my land drops, so I think it's good just to uh, ditch these cyclers. And I'm fine just locking down this flourishing fox um, next turn. Or play out the marmoset. Um, the more mana efficient play will probably be the prickly marmoset. Um, but I think we have to lock this down. It's going to be too scary if he cycles and deal like a ton of damage and attack past my um, prickly marmoset. Question here too is do I cycle away to go for blood? And I still think I do. I, don't, I can fly off the 2-2, two -two, but... I don't think that matters. This will block off, block it off anyway. So we're just, we're just gonna cycle this. Snare tap Titian. Okay, if we get a land, maybe we can cycle something along with it. Um, Zena Flare. I could Zena Flare this actually. Maybe we just stop the Snare tap Titian for next turn, and we can do the Rooting Moloch. How much I'll be taking? I guess three. It's not that bad. We'll take three for now, and if and hopefully this survives. Um, no, we're not blocking. Sorry, I was. Uh, Sorry, I'm typing too, so... Alright, um... Yeah, I guess we pass. I guess I don't mind cycling main phase to hit my land drop. Maybe that's just better. And then we'll, we'll just use another two-man cycler. Um, I can even get in for two if I have to. Yeah, even a one-man cycler here. Yeah, let's just get in for two, and then... Um, I shouldn't actually, actually, I shouldn't have attack, because now he can deal two back to me. That's really bad. I um, might have thrown this game by attacking. But he is flooding out, um, but here we're just going to cycle with Suffocating Fumes. We still have Xena Flare to save our butts, um, and we can answer any other crazy large bombs that he has um, with the Xena Flare, and we have six with it, so we're going to gain a ton of life. Play land, okay. Um, I guess we can play out the Marmoset now, and we can still keep a one-mana Cycler. So my, don't mind just... Staying back here, or maybe attacking. I mean, I can cycle twice to tap everything down. So it's actually not that bad. Yeah, let's just attack. Well, that sucks. Um, that's only give, gonna give it minus two, minus two. So I think it's still fine cr cycling. And I can still block off the 5 2 with the, the uh, snare tactician. It's not going to do anything, but I can, now I can tap down the 5-2 main phase. Or I can tap down the Necro Panther since the two-powered creature will. Um, okay, we have to do it now, I think. And we'll, 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 we'll definitely tap down the... Um, 
the Necropanther here. Because if he manages to kill my prickly marmoset, um, I don't want to be taking five. He does exile, which does suck, but I think I'm blocking here. It's pretty risky not to block. Okay, another Blitz Leech. Okay, so the opponent's just gonna kill us with Blitz Leeches here. Um, okay. I guess I might have the Xena Flare. Um, how much does it cost? Four. Alternatively, I can play out the Hunting, the Rooting Moloch. I think I might have to just Xena Flare here, just to stay alive. So we're just gonna pass. Um, and I'm gonna Xena Flare to 5-2. I think I'll cycle a two-man cycle first to just gain more life. Yeah, let's just do that. Don't really like using this on a creature, but I think I will. Just to prevent the damage from... Just to stay alive. And we go up back up to 17. Okay, he got me there. Do I survive, though? No, I don't. Okay. Fun played it really well. Blitz Leech is at the top end. Alright. I guess red-white cycling isn't all that unbeatable, but maybe I shouldn't have blocked because he had the Blitz Leeches. I don't know. And now I'm going to stop looking at my other stuff and just focus on the game. But those Blitz Leeches really got me there. Me being unable to get any um, good blocks against a 3-3 was not what I intended, but I guess I could have cycled twice and tapped two things down. Maybe that was better. I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, no, I cycled one in one main phase. Let's, let's keep this. I don't mind just cycling away uh, Memory Leak, turn one. Maybe we keep the Draft Healer. Maybe we cycle it. Like, it's still a good two drop. I don't mind playing early on. We'll see what, what there is. We'll see if we need a one-man cycler or not. Um, I guess Draft Stinger is just better, right? Yeah, let's just play out the Draft Stinger. Then maybe we can cycle away the Draft Healer. Because the game plan is to do damage, not to heal. Okay, Boot Nipper, we can Fire Prophecy on that, I don't hate that. The Life Link is pretty annoying, so I think I Fire Prophecy here. Um, and I'll ditch this Suffocating Fumes. Yeah, since it's a two-man cycler, I don't need to prioritize it too much. I don't really want him gaining life, so it's fine for me to kill the Boot Nipper. Also, this can be Mutate Target, which is quite annoying. Pass the turn. Okay, Valiant Rescue is quite nice. Let's just attack for two. If he has any interaction, probably does. I don't know. Might have a Fire Prophecy here. Okay, Flame Spill. At least that's not going to target my Valiant Rescuer, so I'm fine having this happen. The Valiant Rescuer can just win me the game if I keep cycling every turn. So it's good to just, you know, play this um, second main so he doesn't kill it on our main phase, because this is a more valuable target than the Dranum Stinger. Symbiote, okay. We can still tap that down. He's in the Okay, ram through, so he so he has everything here. Um But now we can play the snare tactician, which is also a pretty scary threat he needs to contend with. Hopefully we can do enough damage to eventually Xena flare him to death. Um There's a Microdor Great Horn taking four. That's okay, we can still cycle and deal with that later. This also ramps him, so it's pretty annoying. Yeah, I'm fine taking four here. Scorpion's pretty annoying here. Um, but I think I need to attack, deal some damage to the opponent. 
Although there is a Reptilian Reflection. So maybe we just take the turn off and um, play out the Reptilian Reflection. I'll be taking a lot of damage here, though. So I don't know about that. But when are we ever going to cast this? That's the question. Try never. So I guess we just cast now, stay back. I think I'm fine blocking this area. Scorpion taking four. We can set up like a Reptilian Reflection next turn. He's probably using this as Sack Fodder. Okay, take four. Not good. So I might have to play Dran of, Steel, Dran of Healer this game just to stay alive. And land is good off the top. So I'm probably going to play a Dran of Healer just to uh, have some healing going on. Um, do I attack here? I do need to get in for some damage. So I think I'm fine attacking. And then we can second main the um, Reptilian Reflection. I mean, hopefully he doesn't have anything here. Because if he kills my Snare Tactician, that's not good for me. Yeah, it's not good for me. I guess I'm going to have to trade um, for the, with the Reptilian Reflection. And double blocks, so that's fine. I guess that's okay. I'm willing to take that trade. Um, that's fine. I'm hoping he attacks here. I do want to trade, trade and kill this. Because I'm not in the racing scenario here. Yeah, he just passes here. Okay, we're just we're just, we're gonna cycle this easy prey then. Gain some life. Don't need to make this into a creature, or else he just answers it. And now we have a pacifism, which is really good. And then we can even cycle this coordinate charge main phase again for some damage, and I will, because I still have Dram Stinger to gain life to stabilize me. So, and this tramples too, so that's quite nice. He can chuck. This is gonna trample over unless he has Death Touch with this. Yeah. Just want to get as much damage so I can Zena Flare him and finish him off. He might have something here. Maybe he can get rid of his pacifism with a Wilt. That would be pretty annoying. But I mean, I think the correct play was to do that. Okay, I did discard a card. Um. I think I discard a Rooting Moloch. Like, sure, it's sure it's like a creature I can play to get something back. But I think the game plan is just to um, just to cycle and kill him. I hear I could just Xena Flare here. I think I will. Hopefully this doesn't go bad. I do lose two life for doing this, but I can't allow that to keep connecting. And then maybe we can just cycle and kill him with the Reptilian Reflection eventually, and hopefully he's just out of stuff. Okay, um, I think I have to cycle here. I'm not going to use a Cathartic Reunion. Like, Cathartic Reunion is fine and all, but... I do, I do need to get in some damage, so this is quite good. And we'll save the Imposing Vantasaur for next turn. Um, and then we're going to cycle this. I don't think we're ever going to cast it, ever. And then we can play out the Marmoset second main. I'll keep the land in hand so I can cycle it. I can discard it. Okay. And the Marmoset hits pretty hard, so I'm just going to cast that. And I think we have this game locked down. The opponent just ran out of stuff to play. And the Xena Flare really helped us there. Just being able to gain us life and take out that 5-5, which is really annoying for us to deal with. Usually it goes face, but sometimes you have to use it defensively. And this is how you farm Ikoria.
Um, okay, we're on a draw. I think this is a fine keep. One, one lanterns are okay, usually, with a cycling deck. Turn one, trap, okay, we're just gonna cycle end of turn. And hopefully we get our land drop, but we still have a goal for blood to cycle if we don't get our land drop. We have a bunch of decent three drops to play. And then we have, like, two drops to cycle away as well on turn two, so we're in decent shape. One landers usually are okay in the cycling deck, as crazy as it seems. Just because there's just so much cycling going on that... Okay, thank god the opponent isn't going to develop anything this turn except Evolving Wilds. But it comes in tap, so... He still has a pretty slow start. No lands. Okay, land is good. Now we can play out the Valiant Rescuer. And it, as long as it survives, it's just going to win the game. Essentially. I don't mind cycling main phase of su suffocating fumes um, on my turn because there's a, there is a chance um, where I top deck a land and I and I can cycle a one mass cycler on his turn. So yeah, that's why I'm doing it main phase. I think he's gonna use spring draw trap on the valiant rescuer. Might as well do it now. Sure, it's a pretty scary card that needs to be dealt with asap. Okay, don't have any two drops. I think I need a Cathartic Reunion here. Um, discarding Suffocating Fumes, obviously. I could also discard a Marmoset. Yeah, let's discard a Marmoset. Just need to ensure that I hit my land drops here. And Cathartic Reunion is doing an amazing job. Um, we'll pass the turn. End of turn, we can still cycle away a one drop. Get closer to our Xena Flare. Take two. Next turn we get land, we can play Reptilian Reflection, um, and Cycle, don't care about that, we'll Fire Prophecy that. I could also just keep a Fire Prophecy, but I'm, I'm afraid he could have some way to pump it, so I think I just cycle this for now. Um, now what? I can play Snare Tactician and Cycle for one. That's also pretty good. Alternatively, I can play Reptilian Reflection in Cycle for 1. Or I can Fire Prophecy and kill this and play Dranus Stinger. Um, I mean, he could mutate onto this, and that's pretty annoying. So I think I kill it here. Um, I could also do it second main, but I do want to play around some stuff. So, yeah, let's just kill this ASAP. Uh, let's bottom. What do we want to bottom... Um, I could also just decline the bottom. Um, do we need the reflection here? I'll just decline. I can get him for one. So Poland is like in some sort of so time mutate deck. That's a good card. Hmm. That's a card I actually don't mind just tapping down main phase. I mean, on the secondary main. Yeah, let's just play it out the uh, Snare Tactician here. And then we'll cycle away, go for blood or Dranif Healer, I think. And we'll do, it, we'll do it on his turn so we don't have to take four. Because this is a lot of damage here. And he can get back his Insatiable Hemophage if he mutates onto this. Sure. Don't need to do it now. We'll just cycle this. Free combat. Ping him for one. Tap down the Boneyard Lurker. Next turn we can play on Marmoset. That's pretty nice. And getting our land drops is quite nice too. No need to block. We'll take two. The Marmoset can block pretty well here. Even Pacifism is nice. I could pacify the Boneyard Lurker. Um, but I think for now we just play, the, play out the Marmoset. I could also just fight with the Gopher Blood. But I think it's more efficient to cycle, I think. So we're just going to play the Marmoset. Um, say go. Cycle this Zagoff Crystal pre-combat. Tap down the Boneyard Lurker. And then um, we can even pacify if he decides to go big with it. Um, yeah, that's annoying. Sure.
Guess we'll be taking four. I could trade off the Draft Stinger for the Frost Lynx as well. He's going to mutate onto this and get back the Insatiable Hemophage. Um, hopefully there's no a lot of suspicious Sterics. Archipelagor is fine, but we're going to cycle it, tap down the Boneyard Lurker. He does get back the Hemophage to mutate again to cycle. Um, but we're still going to pacify this for sure. And maybe we can cycle enough to uh, play defense that we should be okay. Oh, the Spring Jaw Trap. Okay, to kill the Snare Tactician. Makes sense. And I'll play out a Reptilian Reflection. I don't need to main phase this. I might just cap this back on defense um, to ambush the 2-3. Uh, so I'm fine attacking here. And if he wants to play the Spring Jaw Trap, that's fine. Pull might be suspicious here. Um, do I want to cycle? No, I just say my go. Um, don't mind cycling this main phase. Actually, I could keep this as, up as a pump trick, so if he tries to um, kill my Snare Tactician, that's okay. So what I can do now is I can just cycle away to go for blood. T tap down the Night Squad Commando. And I can even use more coordinated charge on this. Even a Dran of Healer that can work, so this is really good. We can just attack like this, force him to trade. I don't mind trading my 1 1 since it's not going to gain much value, anyways. Take the hits. Pull goes down to 2, just say go. I don't mind just cycling the Draft Stinger just to. Um, prevent some damage as well. Okay. Or I can just take the damage here, like... He can untap the Glimmer Bell. Okay. I actually don't mind him attacking. Yeah, let's just... No, I could just save this. Yeah, let's just save it main phase so we can tap a bunch of his stuff down. So, let's cycle away this Dranif Healer. Um... Tap down his high stuff. Yeah, there's no way he's beating this. Because this trample is just going to get through for one at least. So. Alright, um, yeah, we can just cycle this, these for one. It's not it's not a big deal. With two lands, even though they're double red, it's okay. We'll cycle away the Memory Leak main phase, and then um, maybe cycle, cycle away the Suffocating Fumes if we don't get our white mana. Sure. Cycle this. White mana would be fine. I don't mind actually playing a Draft Stinger here. Okay, so nope. So we'll just play land, Suffocate. Um, cycle away the the Inthata Crystal, maybe Suffocating Fumes, because I could actually see a, a circumstance where he actually played the Crystal. It's not highly likely, but um, it's still fine. Um, yeah, this sucks. Um, guess I don't mind just cycling away a one mass Cycler here, like go for Blood. And I should have actually wait, waited, so that way I could have maybe um, picked up a White Man and cast it, so... Yeah, I should have. I should just cycle this ASAP, and if, got, if I got white mana, I could just play it out the white mana and play out the draft healer. But we'll take some hits here. Opponent's also uh, in the evil plan of drafting the cycling deck, so yeah, Marmoset. I hate seeing that. Um, 
Cycle this for two. I could have actually played out the crystal, maybe. But now I have a nice creature that I can lock down. Cycle way to go for blood. Maybe I just play out the crystal here. I mean, I'll eventually get white mana, right? But I do need to lock this down. It's a pretty scary card. Okay, so this is a circumstance where we actually played out the crystal. Now we can lock down this prickly mana set, which is going to do a million damage if we don't get rid of it. This Xena Flare can help maybe, maybe help us stabilize. Opponent has his own Dranif Healer. Just, del just developing the board. Take some hits here. He gains some life. And I'll play the Dranif Healer just to maybe help me stabilize. Ooh, Valiant Rescuer. Never mind. We'll just play this out. We'll, suff we'll cycle the Suffolk King Fumes main phase. So we can cycle away the Dranif Healer on his turn. And, um... Essentially, just make one ones. Is this only counts for um, the first time each turn? Go for blood. Okay, we'll cycle away the Dranf Healer. Make a million one ones. Disincentivize an attack from the Dranf Stinger. Maybe trade off some one ones as well. Sure. That's a that's a reason why Pacifism also is an amazing set because of this fight effect. Okay. He might just attack with a Dranf Healer, and I'm fine still trading two one ones for it. Like, it's annoying enough. I don't want to take a million damage from a cycling deck. That's fine. Okay, he doesn't. Okay. Pretty interesting. Could play the Imposing Vantasaur. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad attacker. Yeah, I should play out the Imposing Vantasaur. He can help us stabilize the ground. We'll play out land. Should have kept... Maybe, maybe should have kept up land? I don't know. For, um... For, um, maybe should have kept the bland for, um, whatchamacallit, um, Cathartic Reunion, so not sure if that was correct. Um, I don't mind cycling draft here since I'm going to gain a million life with the Xena Flare anyways. Um, like, I do need to kind of pick up my cycling creatures, my cyclers eventually, so. Yeah, let's just cycle this. No effects, but I do need to kind of dig. Finally, we got our white mana. Let's move the attacks here, and if he tries something, I can just Xena Flare away his weird combat tricks. Okay, he's trying something. That's good. Yeah, let's kill off the Dranit Stinger. Let's see what he tries here. Um. This will kill it. Yeah, let's just, you know, flare to shit. Please no, um, indestructible tricks. Okay, this is just a solid two for one then. I got a free kill, he loses a cycler, I gain a bunch of life, and I'm stabilizing again. So I just need to top deck a bunch of cycling cards, and then we should be good. Totally two for one them here, and I wanted to get rid of Dranif Stinger here. So now he can't ping me, I have a good life total. And I can get him for a bunch of damage if I string together a bunch of cycling cards. So we'll just move the attacks. Yeah, Poe might have just lost this game, but we'll see. He could have a, lot, a bunch of tricks up his sleeve, but now I have a Reptilian Reflection I can cycle and attack with. He also has a very strong cycling deck as well. But he's not developing the board. I have a 3-6 that can attack. Life is good. Got, just got to land. Oh well. Oh well. So, yeah, sometimes you run into scenarios like this where you throw away a bunch of cyclers early on and then you have nothing to cycle with, but this is still okay. Um, I guess that could have killed my Reptilian Reflection, so I guess that was, that was the upside of not finding a cycler. Oracorn can trade. We can just play out the Snare Tactician, pass the turn. You could also just eat a 1-1, one, one, but I think I need to keep the 1-1 one, one alive, and we can just start tapping down this Oracorn. And hopefully he doesn't have Mutate, otherwise he's just going to get a bunch of life, but even then, it's almost like a 2-for-1 if he's doing that. Um, yeah, I could have used a... Ah, let's just pass. We'll, we'll, we'll reunion next turn. I'm going to reunion anything, even a Cycler, if I have to. I guess I could Cycle first and then use a reunion. Um, the question is, what do I tap down? Um... I guess I tapped on the Imposing Vantasaur. Okay, I don't mind just cycling this Dranif Stinger. Tap 
tapping down the Avantasaur. And then we can get in for a ton of damage here. Um, do I want to cycle this away? I guess I will as well. We just want to get in as much damage as possible. Um, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, I think this is lethal. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, it's lethal. If I find another cycler, and I did, so. This card, yeah, cycling is so insane, this set. Pulling also had a good deck, but Majestic Oracorn doesn't really fit this game strategy, I don't think. Could have been just a filler 5 drop, which would have been okay, but it still just didn't have any synergy or support, I don't think, so. That was kind of a dead card that you don't really want in the cycling deck. That's the reason why I also cut the Day Squad Marshall in this deck, because you don't want filler creatures at, in this deck. You just want to make sure you have enough ammo for cycling to win the game. Alright, 4 and 1. Essentially, Ikoria Draft 101. Leaning towards cycling. Red is, you, you take Fire Prophecy over Blood Curdle, pack 1, pick 1. Um, take the cycling payoffs, ASAP. Cycling is just broken. It's the reason why the format sucks. It's not because of the other awesome archetypes you can draft. It's just because cycling dominates the format. It makes almost everything else... Um, Mediocre compared to it. Okay, we have Dramp Healer. I don't mind just casting this on two. We can cycle away to starting development. Yeah, let's try it. And then we can always play a Marmoset afterwards. Um, seems good enough. Hey, we can even follow up with some nice um, three drops. The question is, if he does play a 3 toughness blocker here, I'm not going to play out the Dranith Healer. But I'm going to try to have him use Essence Scatter my Dranith Healer here. Don't need to show him the second color, I'm just going to play out the Dranith Healer. Maybe this forces him, prompts him to use the Essence Scatter or like Fire Prophecy. So then this can take the, this can take the removal spell and then I can hopefully resolve these next turn. Okay, that's a good one. Um... I think I just stay back. I don't really want him drawing cards. Um, and I think I play the Snare Tactician because I'm mostly going to... I don't have a one-mana Cycler. I mean, I guess I'd rather play the Marmoset. I'd rather have the Marmoset die first. Yeah, and I'm going to keep the Draft Healer back in case he has a tap trick. I don't mind trading off the Draft Healer for the Thieving Otter. This is just a good card to, like... This is a card that needs to be blocked. Otherwise, he's just going to gain too much advantage over this. And that's not good for me. Phased Dolphin, I guess that's going to make the 2-2 unblockable, but we can always double block it. Um, I guess I can fight it. I guess I don't mind attacking first, because if he does block with the Phased Dolphin, I can cycle. Yeah, let's go for an attack. And if not, we can just fight off the Thieving Otter. Okay, opponent's scared, so he just takes it. Um... I can play the Zagoff Crystal and use the Gopher Blood, but nah, I just th I think we just fight here. And I don't think there's any one mana tricks here that will punish us, so this is fine. Um, then end of turn, we just cycle away the Coordinated Charge, or the Zagoff Crystal. So now he can't draw cards, and this is just effectively a 1-4 blocker. Sure. I'm fine cycling with a two-man cycler since it's kind of clunky. Mystic Subduel, sure. Just, I guess we don't have any clean attacks next turn, so I might as well cycle this way. Dranif Stinger, not bad. Mm. Yeah, let's set up a turn where we have a Snare Tactician and Dranif Stinger. Just kind of get our cycling payoffs on the battlefield and start machine gunning the opponent down. We can even use a coordinated charge um, without cycling. And then this can kill the phase dolphin, but it could. We could get blown out by some sort of removal spell at instant speed, so we should be careful, I think. Maybe. If we top deck in our cycler, that's good since we can also tap down the phase dolphin and then use coordinated charge to finish him. 
Um, so how much? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we can get him for 12, which is pretty interesting. And then we can like kill him with the Zenith Flare if we're lucky enough. Weaponize. Pretty strange card because you could block and stack. Yeah, I guess we can now main phase the Suffocating Fumes. Um, yeah, let's just do that. Ping the opponent down. Tap down his creature. He can stack and kill off a Draft Stinger, which I don't care about. Um, I might as well just cycle this too to get the extra ping. Just doing as much damage as possible. Cycle even more. Hey, and guess what? We have more cyclers, and then we can Zeta Flare him and kill him. Yeah, just trying to get as many pings in as possible, as much as possible. Get him for five. We can Zeta Flare him. Just two more cyclones, and then we can Zeta Flare him and kill him, essentially. Or we can just cycle one, get top deck of land, and Zeta Flare him and win the game. Yeah, pretty weird card in a blue red spells deck. Weaponize a monster doesn't really fit the criteria. Phase Dolphin is whatever. Shred Sails, I can see cycling happening in the red-blue spell stack if you have, like, Omnices and Riot Riel, but cycling's not a big concern unless you have those cards. So yeah, sure, we'll just tap that down and win, right? Um, yeah, we'll just tap that down and win. I think I'll, yeah, I guess Imposing, imposing Vantasaurus cycling this just wins us the game, right? Because that's 8 damage, we got him. Yeah, pretty easy victory. Ikoria, Cheat Sheet Guide. Um, I think I made a couple of uh, cycling decks already in Ikoria. So as you can tell, this card is completely dumb and busted. And uh, there you go. This is how you win your limited environment. If no one knows about the cycling exploit, you just do it yourself. Get a bunch of gems back and be happy. Right, five and one. Opening hand, not bad. We have our three lands. We can cycle away to Suffocating Fumes. We have Pacifism for defense. Seems all right. And we can play our three drops, so pretty decent. Can we see an egg turn one? Okay. All right, even Snare Tactician. So we have our um, our um, tr Trinity here, our Holy Trinity, Prickly Marmoset, Reptilian Reflection, and Snare Tactician. Don't think I pacify this. I don't think that accomplishes anything. We'll just play land and pass. And in turn, we can cycle away suffocating fumes. We'll pacify something larger later. And uh, I think I lead with the Marmoset. Um, since if I get a land, I mean, made a Reptilian Flexion I can lead with since it hits a little bit harder. I don't really care about that. X equals 3. That's fine. Cycle away suffocating fumes. I could lock this down to prevent 3. Um, so now what? I mean, I guess I don't mind locking this down cycling, but maybe just play out the Reptilian Reflection is better, so then this might disincentivize an attack next turn. We can just keep up the Suffocating Fumes to cycle, and the Dranif Healer, we can take three or four here. Because maybe the Pacifism is better for a much more scarier target, and at, at the very least, a 3-3 three, three isn't all that impressive. Okay, there it is. That's a that's a creature we need to definitely pacify. Um, it's not even a question. Land is good, so we're definitely going to pacify here. There's no reason we shouldn't. And then we'll just keep out the Rippling Reflection on defense. Um, 
yeah, so quite happy I've actually saved that pacifism. Otherwise, we're going to die. Um, hopefully, they don't gain trample, because if they do, he can just generate creatures off of it. But I don't mind just using Reptilian Reflection ambushing the IV Elemental here. Just playing defense and cycling away a two-man cycler. Because that's great value for us. If not, we're still cycling end of turn. Getting out the Snare Tactician, and then eventually we get enough lands, we can cycle and attack. And then, cy and then cycle back and block. So this is the scary bomb I was talking about when we were in draft mode. Um, it's, it's a scary card that um, can generate a bunch of creatures. So if I cycle here and he has that pump trick, do I want to play around it? Um, I guess now I don't have to play around it because I can just cycle in the turn. I'm actually happy he's attacking here, so now I can ambush and get a free kill. So that's quite nice for me. Definitely blocking here. Free kill. Not bad. Um, and here I can just play out the Prickly Marmoset. Um, it's a first striker, so I could just cycle a one mass cycler and block this. We'll see if he attacks first. If he does, I will. I might even propose a double block in case he has some sort of weird pump trick. Frilled Scared Mentor. That's only Menace. I don't really care about that. The Menace is fine. I don't mind just double blocking, otherwise he's just going to grow it over time. This can only give for creatures, so I don't mind just cycling and dealing with all this. Please attack. Okay, I'm so happy he's t attacking here because, yeah, I can't I can't deal with this. And this is first strike, so this will kill off the 4 4 first. So the opponent's really making misplays here. Like, this is a, this is really not good for him. He's now I can first strike away to menacer. First strike happens before regular combat damage, and he doesn't have any mana, so I think he messed this one up. And but this can trample. I need to block this down, or at least tap it down the turn after. So first strike will happen here. Yeah, that's really bad for him. Um, and we'll play out the snare tactician. How much does this cost to pump? Four. So this can essentially become a 4-4. I can still cycle and deal with it, so I don't mind cycling and doing a double block if he goes for an attack. Alternatively, I could cycle now and attack, but I don't think that's very good. So I think I'm just going to pass here. And then I don't mind just blocking the Almighty Brushwag if he attacks with it. And then use the Reptilian Reflection to also block. Pun's really making misplays this game. So I can use that to my advantage. Like, he just, I just killed two creatures for free, so he's going to have some trouble. If he kills the Snare Tactician, that's okay. I mean, again, I can still cycle away the prickly, cycle with the Prickly Marmor set, go for the first strike, attack, block on the Almighty Brushwag, so. I'm fine if he attacks here. I actually don't mind. Um, so the pump trick is a plus three, plus three trick. Um... So I think the correct choice is to cycle here. We're going to tap down the Humble Naturalist in case he has some Mutate Flash creature, which I highly doubt he does. Um, he needs to pump this to make this into a 4-4. So I'm going to put the Prickly Marmoset in front of it, and then put the Reptilian Reflection in front of the 3-2. And even if he's, he has a pump trick for Reptilian Reflection, I guess I guess it still results in a trade if he has a plus 3, plus 3 of the Frill Skirt Mentor, so that's fine with me. Opponent's being a little bit too hyper-aggressive, I think. A little bit of a misplay, I think, he was trying to do. So this will become, yeah, 4-4. Four, four. So I think the Prickly Marmus has a good block on it. Um, yeah, we'll block like this. I don't want really want to offer the Snare Tactician, because he's not going to kill it first. And these are good blocks for me. Because if he isn't going to pump the Prickly Marmoset, then... Um, Then at least I kill a 3-2. And I can always fight it next turn to go for blood. So this, so the opponent is just being way too aggressive, I think. Um, this is just not good for him. Even if he pumps, first strike is going to kill the Almighty Brushwag. So he for, totally forgot about this. This is a total blunder unless he has like two pump spells here. Like He could have that two. Sure, I don't care. The first strike still happens. 
first strike still happens. I mean, unless he has a one-man trick, which he probably does here. Okay, so it's not that bad. Um, he's gonna make a two drop. Okay, sure. But now his combat tricks are gone. I still have a five powered creature on defense. He makes a two two. Who cares? That's not a big deal. Um, so I guess I'll fight off the one one here. Um, keep up a two man cycler. Seems good for me. Yeah. And then we'll keep the reptilian reflection back on defense. Say go. So now, he, so he went all in with this trample plan. He two for one himself just to kill a um, prickly marmoset, which isn't good. Um, and I have a cycler that I can cycle away against his two two. I mean, he could use a ram through here, and then like kill my snare tactician and make a four four. But even if he does, I mean, a three three with the ram through, I still think it's fine. Um, let's let this happen. And then he does an attack, obviously. Okay, so opponent's being a little bit smarter now. Now what we can do is that we can tap down his humble naturalist. So maybe we can attack next turn. And I'm gonna keep the reptilian reflection from being a creature, so he doesn't answer with any instant speed interactions. Land is very good. So now what we can do is we can play out land. Um, I could get back my other prickly marmoset with the rooting Moloch, but I don't think I have to. Um, I think we're fine getting in there. Let's cycle away the coordinate charge. And then we can get in for... Uh, let's just get in for 5, because he could have a some sort of weird trick again. Put out the Marmoset. I don't mind... Yeah, so mm, he could have something, but I think I still block this. And hopefully he doesn't have some weird pump shenanigans here. Xenoflare can also answer to 6-6. Six, six. I mean, I'll be 2 for one in myself with the Pacifism and Xenoflare, though. So it's not good, but if this Trample stuff gets out of hand, I do need to answer this, so... Okay, now we can tap down to 2-4. Gains a little bit of life, who cares? Um, I can also just play out the um, Serpent here. But I'd rather cycle, I think, and I can get back to Serpent, the Rooting Moloch, so I think we go for this. Um, do I, if I attack with the 2-3, he has a chance to double block. Um, how much damage is 9 down to 7? Yeah, just dead if he doesn't. Um, yeah, he's just dead here. If I Xena Flare, if he doesn't, if he takes all this and, um, and I Xena Flare him for eights. Okay, he's chumping, that's fine. Um, um, yeah, let's let damage happen. Seven, is this lethal? Let me see. It's almost lethal. I guess I don't mind him making a 2-2. We'll just cycle away to Rooting Moloch. Um, or I can just cycle to tap down the 2-2 from having him make a creature. So we're just going to do that instead. Just cycle to Rooting Moloch, prevent the 2-2 from attacking, and then Zeta Flare him for lethal next turn. Okay, we'll let that resolve. Don't think that's our concern. Wondering why he didn't answer the Snare Tactician. I think this is a little bit more scarier. I guess he doesn't have any good blocks on the Marmoset anyways, but the fact that this can tap things down is a lot more scarier to deal with. I could tap this down too to prevent two damage. Eh, whatever. I'll just do it end, end of turn, and then we can. He's gonna be up to ten, but we'll kill him with Xena Flare anyways. Yeah, so it's just game over here. I don't see him winning this.
yeah, we, we have way more than enough to kill him. This is just game over here. Yeah, just shoot him for 10 out of nowhere. Thanks a lot, Xena Flare. I mean, we had that game even without Xena Flare, but... Wizards of the Coast is kind enough to get to ruin this entire set, so we'll congratulate them on doing so. Huge mistake printing Xena Flare. Like, it's like a mythic uncommon. Like, the card's at uncommon, and like, there's a, there can be at least two or three of them going around in the table, and cycling just completely ruins. And cycling's already great, so. Very fun and interactive games of magic, obviously. Just shooting your opponent for 10 out of nowhere. Alright, um, so one more win, and then we can get to our um, seven wins. Do a deck overview after we get our seven, but let's just squeeze out this game. Did lose one game. Guy had double Blitz Leech, and... I was also missing my land drops, but hey, overall the win percentage is definitely above average, definitely overperforming. Okay, Snare Taptician, okay, we have our 2 mass Cycler, a 1 mass Cycler, I'm keeping this. We're also under draw, so it's a high chance we get our th third land anyways. Okay, um, play the land, we'll just cycle away to go for blood, um, hopefully we get our land drop, if not, we just cycle away a 2 mass Cycler. Um, so red, green, hopefully it's not that trample thing again, so I might need to find my pacifism. ASAP. Okay, um... Don't need to show him our second color yet, so I think I'm just going to play on Mountain. Say go, end of turn we cycle away the Zagoff Crystal. Um, I could also cycle away the Lava Serpent since I'm going to eventually just get back, but we'll just hold on to it for now. Because the Zagoff Crystal is not useful at all. Like It's 3 mana ramp rock, but we're not ramping this deck. We don't really want to pay 3 mana to ramp. Cycle, yeah. Um, I guess I played a Snare Tactician. Let's say he answers and draws a card. Is there any re bad? I guess it's not that bad. I mean, he draws a card, so what? This is just on curve, and we can start tapping this out next turn. We can also go for Blood and kill it, too, if he if he just has a tap effect. It also survives Ram through, so I think Snare Tactician is correct. If he attacks, I'm, I don't know if I should block. Okay, okay, so I definitely need to deal with this. Um, he can just ping me in the face and draw cards. So that's going to be difficult for me to deal with. Um, um, yeah, I guess Go for Blood doesn't answer it. Next turn I could just cycle and fight this with the Reptilian Reflection. Because even if I cycle this and um, I tap it down, he's just going to tap in response and draw a card. So it's essentially not going to do anything. So I think the right play is to play the Reptilian Reflection. Next turn we can fight off this Porky Parrot. We could even make him like tap first and ping damage to my face and then fight it. Yeah, there's no way I'm doing this. So then next turn we can cycle and maybe fight away this Porky Parrot. Um, but he might keep up mana for it, which is also really annoying. But I need to deal with this, otherwise he's just going to draw a million cards. Please just don't pass your mana turn with all the mana up. He's going to have something. Okay, he's tapping out. That's good. So now I can fight away the Porky Parrot here. So what I can do now is I can play land, um, cycle a two mass cycler, and then I'm fine just getting an attack in. 
turn this into a creature. Lose the combat, attack for seven. Because that's a lot of damage. I don't mind taking two on the backswing. Or three if he puts counters onto everything. I guess he'll draw cards instead. So now I can just cast Go for Blood. This needs to go. There's no way I'm allowing this to stay. Screw that. So now his combo engine is gone. But he just he drew two cards off of it, so it's still good. And now he's drawing two cards of the Primal Empathy, which is also good. But if we do enough damage and we can Z and Flare him for the victory, then then I'm fine with that. So. Polywalk Symbiote. Pretty decent blocker. Yeah, okay, that's annoying. He's just going to make a bunch of 3-3s. Three Do I have to answer it now? I mean, this, I guess this is a 4-4. Four four. I guess I think I need to Xena Flare this, if I'm not mistaken. This is just going to get out of hand. And he's just going to drink, gain a bunch of life. Um, alternatively, I could just take the risk and... Um, tap his guy down, get him for 5, and maybe Xena Flare him to win. I, I mean, I could just do it now, gain a bunch of life... But, I mean, this is already an engine that's going to draw him cards anyway, so does that even matter? Probably not. So I think the game plan here is to Valiant Rescuer. Um, and then we're just going to cycle away the Lava Serpent. Um, tap down the 3-3. Three, three. And I think the game plan has to be to sh kill him. So I think I'm attacking the 5-4. Don't need to attack the Snare Tactician. Might have to keep it back. And then we'll use the 1-1 one, one to chump block the 5-5. Five, five. He's going to draw a bunch of cards. And then we might have to just cycle away to win the, win the game. Um, like, if I can get a little bit more damage in... Um, and he also doesn't have Trample, so I should be able to survive this turn, unless he has Trample. Or some... Or, like, Archip... I mean, Archipelago 4 is pretty annoying, but I'm probably going to block and chump it anyways with the Valiant Rescuer. Because I do want to just get his life lo total low, so I can just kill him with the Xenoflare. Flare. So if I top deck a land, like, I can cycle away Drown Healer, get him for 5, and just even flare him, then we're good. That's quite annoying, he's gonna draw him, gain a bunch of life. Could just chump the 4-4, four, four, because this 1-1 one, one isn't gonna do anything, so we're just gonna do that. Take 3. Fire Prophecy, that's not bad. And then I can cycle a 1-mass Cycler away. Yeah, that's not bad, let's just do that. Um, yeah, let's ditch the coordinate charge. Don't think we need that. I mean, I guess I'd rather just cycle a 2-mass cycler and then use the 1-mass cycler on his turn. So I guess we just do that. And we still have a chump blocker stay alive, so this is good. Um, how much damage do I need to get in? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, down to 3. I can get very greedy here, but I think the correct choice is just attack him for 8. Um, yeah, I should be able to kill him with Xenoflare Flare next turn, so I think we just do that. Stay back with the rest of these two, in case he has something. And we still have some chump blockers. We can tap down the 6-6 six, six and then um, make two 1-1s, one, and then we can still chump. We still have a Snare Tactician as a blocker in case he has something. So I think this is the safest approach. Sure, whatever he gets flying to, I'm just going to tap down. Sure. Pre-combat, we just tap down the Mammoth, Mammoth Chump Block with the 1-1. Snare Tactician is so good. It just halts the progress so much here, and then like the Valiant Rescuer just generates a bunch of Chump Blockers. It's so insane. And then we're going to Chump block with a 1-1. One, one. If he has a pump trick, I guess I'll still survive. It takes three mana to pump. He's going to have a 7-7 seven, seven trampler. I should be good here. Um, opponent's very afraid. Okay, he just makes another 3-3. Three, three. Um, I guess he can ping me for two here, so he can take out my Rep Valiant Rescuer. Um, sure, I, but we got 7 damage to the face, so I think it's just game over. Um, just to be sure, um, yeah, let's just cycle here. Yeah, this card's just so gross. He's gonna kill my Valiant Rescuer. Then we're just gonna Zeno Flare him for the victory. Yeah, it's so disgusting. It's like, it's, you can't even interact with it, it's so gross. 
All right, and there you go. Here's your um, Ikoria exploitation guide, um, your cheat sheet for getting your seven wins. Just pick up the Xena Flare, force the cycling deck. Um, you don't even need Xena Flare. In fact, you can have a very, you can have seven wins. You can have a really high win rate even without Xena Flare. Um, so yeah, that's my complaint. I've talked about it a million times. If you just want to see my previous videos, I have, probably have a bunch of them complaining about Xena Flare, and this is another great example. Um, and you know. 5k gems, I mean, I have to sink my gems into something, so, um, um, let's, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna rename this deck, let's just rename it, it needs, it needs a better name, not cheap trick, it should be fair and balanced, yeah, fair and balanced, um, and then we're just gonna order the deck, um, one mass cyclers, and then, like, the removal spells, too, kind of see what we're working with here. This is more of like a two-man cycler. Um, yep. Very fun and interactive format, obviously. And that's all. It's just, that's just complete sarcasm, guys. By the way, it's, it's not very fun and interactive. It's, um, it would have been a great limited set if it wasn't like this, but yeah, there we go. Um, a million one mass cyclers, a couple two mass cyclers. Um, amazing. There's so many amazing payoffs that common. Draft Stinger is already an issue that you have to. The opponent has to deal with. ASAP. Draft Healer definitely worse than Draft Healer, but still gains just a little bit of life to stabilize. Valiant Rescuer is just gross if you can't answer it, so they need removal right away. Prickly Marmus is also gross since it's pretty difficult to attack and block into. Um, Snare Tactician annoying since it's like a pseudo removal spell. Reptilian just hits like a truck, really difficult to block. 5-4 haste is hard to interact with. Xenon Flares, you just can't interact with this unless you can counter it. But then again, like, do you really want to run a million counter spells in your limited deck just to answer Xenon Flare? Rooting Moloch already in powerful 2 for 1. Get back your cycling creatures. 4-4 four, four body can fight well to go for blood. Um, solid card. And Lava Serpent, um, just a versatile um, card you can cycle away for 2. Or a nice, or a decent top end threat with haste. If the opponent doesn't have any blockers, didn't didn't hard cast this in the game, but I'm um, still happy to have a copy. So there you guys have it. Um, fair and balanced, um, Ikoria limited, um, and that's your guide for getting your seven wins. Yeah, and we're gonna do some more Sendikar Rising draft after this, um, since you know um, I have enough gems and uh, it's a really good format. So stay tuned for more content and uh, have a wonderful day, guys. Take care.